a seafarer, I suppose, in the first half of my career, one challenge that I never did was go around Cape Horn. And, it, you know, I started to look at it and thought, okay, well, what about if I took my own boat and went around Cape Horn in my 50th birthday year? And when I started to look at the Southern Oceans, I realized that a complete circumnavigation of all of the capes in the Southern Hemisphere had never ever been completed on a motorboat less than 24 meters. In this video, we will be taking a look at the incredible Astra, a 23.35 meter steel ice class explorer yacht that recently completed a round the world circumnavigation via the Southern Capes and in doing so, became the first owner skippered full displacement motorboat of less than 24 meters to achieve this epic feat. Before we crack on with the yacht tour, please don't forget to give this video a like and also don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Astra started life as a search and rescue vessel that served with the Swedish Sea Rescue Service between 1995 and 2016. She is credited with saving many lives in the rough and icy northern waters. Her 16mm Ice Class Super 1A steel hull can take Astra to many places which are off limits for explorer yachts of a similar size. Ian McNeil, the owner and captain of Astra, had been preparing for the circumnavigation for many years. He joined the Merchant Navy 34 years ago at the age of 16 and had a career on much larger ships and tankers. And with a Master Unlimited qualification, the crew of Astra were in safe hands. By the end of the voyage, Ian and his highly experienced crew had set a new world record for a sub 24 meter motor yacht, completing the journey in 166 days. Astra is the first sub 24 meter motor powered vessel to circumnavigate the globe via both southern capes. To qualify for the record, they also had to cross the equator twice and cover all 360 degrees of longitude. Cheers. I'm going now. <laughs> yeah, man. Oh. the finish. Almost in the finish. Beautiful morning, yeah? Concluding her monumental journey across depths plunging to a staggering 6,000 meters, Astra charted an impressive 31,538 nautical miles. Averaging speeds of 9.77 knots, she spent 150 days battling the vastness of the seas, with seven days anchored in serene solitude and another seven in bustling ports, consuming a total of 331,000 liters of fuel. Ian has chronicled Astra's transformative journey from a search and rescue vessel to an intrepid explorer yacht in a captivating book. For those eager to delve into this riveting tale, I've provided a link in the video description. I recently had the honor of traveling to Lanzarote to film a yacht tour on board Astra. So sit back and relax as I take you on a guided tour aboard this impressive vessel. Astra has a length at the waterline of 21.21 meters and a beam of 6.63 meters with a draft of 3.2 meters. On her stern, she has some thick rubber rubbing rails and a powered transom gate, which harks back to her days as a search and rescue vessel. I love it when search and rescue vessels that have come out of service get refitted into private boats. One thing you might notice from this vantage point is her low freeboard. Astra has what is referred to as a wet deck. This feature ensures excellent safety, especially during challenging weather conditions, rapidly directing excess water overboard. It also minimizes water resistance, streamlining her journey through the waves, and means less maintenance. It's specifically tailored for rugged marine exploration, and the design brings the added advantage of natural cooling for the crew. 
A versatile wet deck also offers more flexibility for various equipment setups on board the vessel. As you can imagine, having a wet deck means that you must also have a very high threshold on the deck doors, which we will take a look at in a minute. Later on in the video and after the tour of the wheelhouse and the engine room as well as the accommodation areas, I will give you some fascinating details about her stabilizers and propulsion, so make sure that you stay tuned. I love the lines and general design of Astra, she really is a boat that is made for go anywhere navigation and I love her blue hull. Her Portuguese bridge is a feature that was added to the boat in 2017. Ian's fascinating book, he goes into great detail about all of the preparation that went into choosing the right boat for his voyage, as well as all of the planning that went into the conversion of Astra from a search and rescue vessel to a private explorer. It really is an essential read for all intrepid nautical explorers. Here we see Astra's redesigned aft deck, specifically crafted to house the ribcraft tenders at an elevation of 2.2 meters to avoid the wash from the seas on the decks, as well as housing seven 1500 liter IBC tanks for the extra fuel that was needed on the voyage. Of course, if he wanted to, then the owner could have stripped out all of the rescue equipment that is still on the boat. But being a professional mariner, the owner knows all too well how this sort of equipment can be the difference between life and death when you are thousands of nautical miles away from the nearest land. Astra's 15-ton towing rig was kept on the boat, a means that should Astra be near a vessel that has lost power, she can be called into action to assist the stricken boat. Astra's Powerfinger aft crane has a lifting capacity of 6 tonnes. If you subscribe to my YouTube channel, then you probably would have seen the live stream that I did when I was on board Astra in a home port in Lanzarote. Here you can see the significant threshold on Astra between the deck and the entrance to the vessel's interior. The red lip is for some additional plates that can raise the threshold even further. Here is an entrance to the interior of the boat, which we will have a look at once I have finished showing you around the upper deck. As we move towards the bow of the boat, note how the angle of the still deck increases. Strolling along the wide starboard side deck, MV Astra's craftsmanship is evident. Ahead lies the formidable anchor gear with two pull anchors, each weighing 184 kilograms, operated by the powerful Dynamic Oil SPA P9 windlass. The high gunnels afford the crew protection whilst underway. Also on the foredeck, the Heller HLM crane stands ready, offering a one-ton lifting capability. Atop the wheelhouse on the Monkey Island, twin CMATS spotlights enhance night operations, while the impressive radar mast, equipped with state-of-the-art Furuno systems, crowns the boat, ensuring seamless navigation. From this vantage point, you can see the frame on the foredeck used to house the additional fuel forward. This boat is so sturdy that even with all of the additional fuel on board, the vessel's stability was not compromised. When you consider that she battled enormous waves and challenging seas during her voyage, it's a testament to her robust design and engineering. Astra has railing side gates on both her port and starboard side, and the non-skid paint on the deck means that you should not lose your footing when moving around the upper deck whilst at sea. Now, before we head inside and I show you around the communal areas and accommodation, it is worth pointing out that when Astra was built, she was designed as a boat that would not be used by her crew to sleep on. Search and rescue vessels like Astra were designed with sorties in mind that would probably last under 24 hours, so crew accommodation on board was unnecessary. But the owner has done a fantastic job with the layout. As we enter the house from the starboard entrance, to aft is the entrance to the engine room and machinery spaces, which we will check out in a minute. Let's head forward into the crew mess deck area. Over on the starboard side are the stairs which lead up to the wheelhouse. Again, we'll be taking a look up there in a minute. The owner's cabin is found on the port side of the vessel, aft of the saloon area. During her search and rescue days, this part of the boat was used as a sick bay. In fact, whilst in the Pacific, thousands of miles away from land and well out of the range of search and rescue helicopters, a member of Ian's crew became seriously unwell. 
The crew member concerned had developed a large abscess, and if Ian did not intervene, then sepsis probably would have set in. Thanks to Ian's intervention and guided by his own research, with the help from medical support offshore services in Southampton, England, the crew member made a full recovery. Ian gives a full hour-by-hour hour rundown of what happened in his book. If you want a copy of the book, don't forget to head to the link in the video description. In the galley, there is an electric cooker and oven, two 120-litre fridges, and below deck, there is a 1,500-litre freezer. There's also a dishwasher and coffee maker, and for peace of mind, there's concilium heat and smoke detectors. If you need to upgrade any of the safety equipment on board your boat, don't forget to check out my nautical stores. You'll find the link in the video description. On the port side is a shower and toilet. The vessel's hot water system integrates 220 volt electrical sourcing with the engine's heat exchange mechanism. Ensuring consistent and efficient flow, modern electric pumps govern the water pressure on board the boat. Let's head down into the accommodation area. Astra has a total of nine berths and five cabins. As we come down the stairs, this area, which is on the starboard side, has been converted to house a large fridge, essential for long distance autonomous cruising and additional storage space, which I'll show you in a minute. Here is one of the twin single cabins, which is currently being used by the chief engineer on board. As it has no portholes, it's perfect for watch keeping as there is no natural light in here. When Ian acquired the vessel after she retired from her search and rescue duties, it became apparent that there was going to be a lack of dry store space, freezer space and refrigerated space. In fact, the dry storage space on board prior to conversion was so small that it is now used to house DVDs. This area used to be part of the lower crew mess room and is three meters in length with a depth of 1.65 meters and a headroom that extends up to 2.12 meters. As you can see, it has been converted to house lots of dry storage with very deep drawers and a large 1500 liter freezer. A specialist refrigeration company with experience in creating freezers in awkward spaces was commissioned to build and house the large freezer. If you'd like to find out more about the provisioning that went into the trip, then you can find out more in Ian's book. Again, you'll find the link for his book in the video description. As we move to the forward cabins on the starboard side, we have another toilet and shower. The seat in the shower ensures that you can still have a dobe whilst underway in rough conditions. Although to be fair, most people tend to steer clear of the showers when navigating through rough weather. Personally, I always preferred having a shower, whether it was rough outside or not. On the starboard side is one of the twin single cabins, if you allow me a minute just to switch the light on. For someone like me who spent six years at sea on various warships, this accommodation is still very appealing. Let's face it, anything's going to be better than sharing a mess with 30 other matlows where you've got gulches which are 12 deep. Over on the port side is another twin single cabin which is symmetric in design to the one on the starboard side. And then moving aft along the port side is another twin single cabin. During Astra's circumnavigation, when not on watch, the crew would spend their time up in the bright and airy saloon on the main deck. During the trip itself, the crew spent a total of 119 days at sea whilst in the southern hemisphere and 44 days at sea whilst in the Eastern Hemisphere. They would also end up crossing the equator twice. The vessel does have Wi-Fi on board and here is the router. Now that we've finished checking out the accommodation areas, let's head up to the wheelhouse before checking out the engine room. And remember, if you haven't already, please don't forget to give this video a like and to subscribe to my channel. I'm really looking forward to showing you the wheelhouse because it is full to the brim with the latest technology and loads of comms and nav equipment. If you're a bridge enthusiast like myself, then you're in for a real treat. So make sure you stay tuned. Entering Astra's comprehensive wheelhouse, the space balances contemporary technology and essential maritime tools. There is so much tech up here that this part of the boat is worthy of its own video feature. So instead, let me give you a general rundown of the equipment up here while showing you around. 
The wheelhouse features both satellite and magnetic compasses, including the Observator Type A electric compass. There's a Furuno depth sounder, which provides insight into the water's depth below, while the Furuno windset offers information about current wind conditions. Communication is well covered with a range of devices, from the Sailor VHF suites to the UHF Retrieves RT27 sets. The recent inclusion of the GMDSS radio system adds another layer to the boat's extensive communication tools. When Astra was acquired by Ian, she was fitted with a Furuno Time Zero 3 electronic charting system. This was upgraded in 2021 to provide a completely independent Time Zero 4 system with a full worldwide portfolio of electronic navigational charts, which was installed on an SSD PC. Navigation is supported by dual Simrad AP70 autopilots with an independent backup system for added assurance and redundancy. The radar and GPS displays, particularly the Furuno units paired with the black box Time Zero plotter, aid in the very detailed plotting of courses and locations. The onboard digital charts provided by the Maxi Time Zero 4 system offer a range of navigational maps. The AIS receivers by Furuno and the Ocean Signal EPIRB are also integrated into the kit up here, enhancing safety measures. I have served on lifeboats and warships with less nav and comms gear than what is found in the wheelhouse of this boat. The presence of CCTV cameras combined with navigation and searchlights ensures better visibility in various conditions. Additional features like the Ampliden intercom and the Furuno wave analyzer serve functional and essential purposes, emphasizing effective communication and understanding of sea conditions. In fact, later on in the evening over dinner, Ian explained to me that the most essential bit of kit on the wheelhouse during their voyage was the wave analyzer. Having dealt with confused seas during his many years at sea, Ian knew firsthand how challenging it could be to estimate the sea state and the direction of the swell to adopt the best heading, particularly at night. But by relaying significant wave height, first and second wave height, wave direction and speed information, the wave analyzer allowed the vessel to be put on a course that worked best with the conditions. But as always, I'm interested to hear your thoughts. So what do you think of the bridge aboard Astra? Let me know in the comments below. If you follow my other channel, Boat Boy, I'll be uploading my favorite features video shortly. Now that we have finished looking around the wheelhouse, let's head out onto the Portuguese bridge. In a minute, I'm also going to take you up the radar mast, so make sure you stay tuned. Over here on the port side are the lever controls for the crane that serves the aft deck. From this level we also get a good view of where the tenders are stowed. At the moment Astra has a 5.3 meter and 4.2 meter rib craft, both with deep V hulls. The second rib craft was not on board whilst I was filming. One thing you might notice on this radar mast that you won't see on other Explorer yachts is the blue lights that were fitted during her SAR days. As it turned out, these were great for warding off unwanted visitors as Astra navigated through pirate-infested waters. And check out that massive searchlight. There are in fact three of these on the Monkey Island and I'll show you more when I climb up here in a minute. Thanks to the deck on this Portuguese bridge, one thing you won't have to worry about when you're up here is water accumulating on the deck. The Portuguese bridge, a distinctive feature on explorer yachts like this one, is more than just an aesthetic element. It plays a critical role in safety, especially in rough seas. It provides a sheltered walkway for crew, ensuring safer movement during challenging conditions. It's a testament to how explorer yachts prioritise both functionality and safety when venturing into uncharted waters. Check out the tempered glass on the forward raking windows and the sturdy stanchions which help to ensure that you're never going to get a rogue wave breaching into the wheelhouse. Now if you subscribe to my YouTube channel you probably saw my live stream that I shot whilst I was on board filming for this video. But if you didn't see it let me take you up onto the monkey island. Climbing up here isn't easy when you're sweaty and you've got a camera in one hand but for you guys, it's worth the venture. 
and you won't be disappointed by the view. The first thing I want to show you up here are the massive searchlights. Now, being a former search and rescue vessel operating in the northern latitudes, the searchlights were always going to be big, but I've never seen searchlights this big on a vessel under 24 meters. CMAT searchlights are renowned in the marine industry for their robust build and high performance. Crafted with precision, these searchlights offer exceptional illumination, ensuring safety during nighttime voyages or in challenging visibility conditions. With a focus on durability, they're designed to withstand the harshest marine environments, making them a favoured choice for many vessels worldwide. In total, Astra has three radars, a Furuno 1530, 3220 and an NXT solid state radar. The powerful fire hose on Astra is still in full working condition. This could come in handy if ever you find yourself navigating through pirate infested waters, assuming of course that the pirates aren't armed. As we head to the aft section of the Monkey Island, you'll notice the Furuno solid state radar. It's positioned here so that the bridge team can get a detailed radar picture of what is happening in the radar blind spot areas. Most vessels will have an area immediately aft of the vessel that is blind to radar, owing to the elevation and downward looking angle of the radar beams, but not on Astra. While I'm up here, then now is probably a good time to talk about this boat's air draft. She has a non-retractable mast and her air draft is 12.5 meters. Now we've finished our aerial tour of Astra, let's head down to the engine room. Check out the sand that's been blown across from the Sahara. As we descend the radar mast and make our way to the beating heart of this majestic vessel, I want to share some of her stats with you. Astra has a total of six fuel tanks with a fuel capacity of 44,000 litres. She can carry 1,730 litres of fresh water and 1,000 litres of black water. She is fitted with an Enwa water maker which can produce 250 litres of fresh water an hour. Prior to setting off on her circumnavigation, Astra's main engine, generators, hydraulics and air compressors were all serviced and all of her diesel tanks were inspected and cleaned. In the eight months leading up to her departure, Astra had four separate yard periods. The engine room on Astra has four watertight compartments and the electrical switchboard, as you'll see in a minute, is completely separated from the engine room. There is no corrosion on the shell plating and all of the pipework in the engine room is either stainless steel or copper. If you love engine rooms, then I am fairly confident that you are going to love what you are about to see. My background when it comes to the time that I've spent at sea is not from an engineering perspective, but I've always been fascinated by marine engineering. And judging by how fondly the chief engineer on Astra spoke of her engineering prowess, it is clear that not only is Astra very capable, as has already been proven, but that she also has heaps of redundancy built into her systems. Stepping into the engine room of Astra, we encounter a symphony of machinery, both time-tested and contemporary. At the heart of Astra is a Mitsubishi engine, the S6U MPTK model, with a substantial power output of 993.6 kilowatts or 1350 horsepower. Installed in 1994 and burning diesel, it's an engine with pedigree. It has recorded around 13,300 hours of runtime. And while this might sound like a lot, a full service was conducted in 2021 with reports available to testify its excellent condition. Engine cooling is facilitated by a freshwater heat exchanger system. When it comes to propulsion, the Mitsubishi's power is channeled through a Finoy G50 FK gearbox with a reduction ratio of 2.95 to 1. This transfers power to a controllable pitch propeller made by Berg, featuring four blades and spanning 1,718 millimeters in diameter. The propeller shaft itself is made of stainless steel, ensuring durability against the harsh marine environment. Complementing the main engine is the Volvo MD120 secondary diesel engine. 
Apart from providing that extra push, it plays a crucial role in the Get Me Home propulsion system, driving a hydraulic engine linked to the main shaft. This auxiliary engine outputs a useful 46 kVA at 230 stroke 400 volts. Similar to the main engine, its power is also processed through a Finoy G50 FK gearbox. For maneuverability in challenging docking situations, Astra has a hydraulic Berg bow thruster pumping out a hefty 100 kilowatts. And when silence is golden, the exhaust system ensures it functioning dry to mitigate noise. Delving deeper, the bilge system on Astra is comprehensive. Manual and electric bilge pumps are on standby, accompanied by five bilge alarms, ensuring any excess water is promptly dealt with. Of course, power management on a yacht like Astra is paramount. A complete overhaul of the electrical installation took place in 2021, performed by Emanasa, with a full report highlighting its current state. For continuous power, there's the Onan Marine Genset, a 23 kVA generator installed in 2021, boasting 1400 hours of runtime. Battery management is well thought out with distinct batteries dedicated for starting, services and the generator. An array of Victron, Skylar and other chargers and inverters ensure a consistent power supply, while the Shore power system accommodates American standards. Water, an essential on board on any vessel, is managed by the Enwa MT6000 SRT water maker, with a capacity to generate 250 litres per hour. It assures fresh water supply on extended voyages. As you saw a moment ago, Astra is equipped with two air start tanks by Atlas Copco, rated at 31.5 bar, and not forgetting the shaft generator from Mechout Spa, a 50 kVA system, ensuring that when on the move, power generation is continuous and of course efficient. Personally, I did not expect to see an engine room this big on a boat under 24 meters. The rotary vane steering gear requires less space to fit and there isn't the associated hydraulic oil leaks that occur with steering gears of the hydraulic ram type. Astra is fitted with two completely independent air conditioning systems, again providing 100% redundancy. The onboard workshop boasts spacious quarters for maintenance tasks. The presence of specialised equipment like a lathe or a pillar drill is a rarity in vessels under 50 metres. If you are interested in finding out more about the machinery on board Astra, then be sure to check out Ian, the owner and captain's book. Remember, you can find the link to his book in the video description. If you use my discount code, then you'll get a whopping 20% off the book's RRP. Again, you'll find the discount code next to the link in the video description. But what do you think of this engine room? Let me know in the comments below. And if you've got any technical questions for Paul, the chief engineer aboard Astra, also don't forget to leave them in the comments below because Paul will be watching the video. Astra has a really impressive range of 9,000 nautical miles. Her top speed is 11 knots and she has a cruising speed of 8.4 knots burning around 48 litres per hour, depending on load and sea state. At the time of making and uploading this video, Astra is currently listed for sale with Devolk Yacht Brokers. I will give more details about that in just a minute, but first I want to talk a little bit about Astra's stabilisers, fuel monitoring system and her prop. But not before we take one last look at the wheelhouse and of course that impressive radar mast. As mentioned earlier on in the tour, Silicmar implemented an advanced fuel flow monitoring system for both the Mitsubishi main engine and the Volvo auxiliary engine. This digital flow meter, rooted in the Corellius principle, offers precision readings up to two decimal places. When reconciling fuel during bunkering, the difference between manual calculations and the meter's recordings is a mere plus or minus 0.2%. This accuracy instilled confidence in Ian regarding the readouts and enabled precise adjustments in fuel consumption. Astra boasts the Magnus Master Stabilizers, a product of the innovative mines at Dynamic Marine Systems in the Netherlands. What's fascinating about the Magnus Master system 
is its blend of advanced technology with stability algorithms. This combination ensures exceptional roll damping across a speed range of 3 to 12 knots. For a bit of technical insight, these stabilizers capitalize on the Magnus effect. In layman's terms, as the boat's hull moves through the water, it creates a flow over the Magnus master rotors. This flow, depending on the rotor's rotation direction, can produce either an upward or downward force to counteract the boat's rolling motion. Astro is equipped with four of these stabilizers, two on each side. Each stabilizer has a peak power demand of 1.5 kW. Interestingly, while Astro stabilizers installed in 2017 run on a 230 volt system, the newer 380 volt model available today would likely be the go-to choice. Astra was originally built with a quartz nozzle. During her first winter in the northern Baltic, while ice breaking to release fishing boats, it was found that the nozzle could get choked with crushed ice when working astern. Later that winter, a Russian cargo ship had a 100 meter mooring line washed overboard during a rescue. This completely fouled Astra's propeller and nozzle. It was decided to remove the nozzle as the type of work she was employed in would continually expose her to such risks. When viewing Astra, Ian noticed her dock creep to starboard when the engines were started, and that the churn of water was thrown to the surface rather than being jetted astern. This would create a loss of efficiency as the propellers had been cropped for use in a nozzle rather than shaped as freestanding propeller blades. Ian's first job on the refit spec was to reinstate the nozzle to improve directional power and engine efficiency. As testament of my dedication to you, my subscribers, I got my GoPro and dived under the boat to show you this footage. Actually, this was filmed by a diver who was carrying out an inspection on Astra. As mentioned earlier in the video, Astra is currently listed for sale with the Volk Yacht Brokers for 2 million euros, which is around 2.172 million US dollars or around 1.7 million pounds. As her owner told me during my visit, Astra is ready for new adventures with a new owner. If you'd like to find out more, then head to the link at the bottom of the video description. And remember, if you have got access to a boat that you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel, then please feel free to send me an email or contact me via social media. I would like to say a big thank you to Devolk Yacht Brokers for helping to facilitate my visit to Lanzarote to bring you this video. And of course, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Ian and the crew of Astra for allowing me on board and for making me feel so welcome. As always, I'd like to say a massive thank you to my channel members for helping to support my channel. If you'd like to become a member of my channel, then click on the link in the video description. If you'd like to stay up to date with what I'm doing in between trips and filming, then make sure you come and find me on Instagram. If you've guessed it, you'll find the link to my Instagram account in the video description. If you've made it to the end of this video, which is my longest video that I've uploaded to YouTube so far, then I really would appreciate it if you gave the video a like, because it basically means that more people will get to see it. Until next time, fair winds and following seas. And if you're still here, drop an anchor emoji in the comments.